Got a bunch of it apart. Time to remove some rust. First thing I'm going to do, put on some protection, including these very dirty goggles because I do not know where I put the clean ones that I found. I got a bunch of different things like different wheels for, for a drill and a couple things for the angle grinder. What I don't want to use is like a, a flap disc, something too aggressive. So I'm going to test a bunch of different methods of removing rust and see which ones I like and which ones I wasted my money on. And enjoy what I assume will be mostly voiceover because none of the methods are quiet in the least. Okay, I know I said I was going to the hood first, but I think the fender is going to be easier. The bigger point is, everything I've done so far, I can undo. I can put this back on, put all the parts back on, and keep driving it. Do I really want to dive in? Well, too late to turn back. I can drive it without paint. What do you mean, no turning back? Here's something worth checking out. So this is just the edge here. And I thought, I didn't think the rust went all the way up this far, but when you start removing paint, you realize the rust is underneath the paint, and it's creeping along uh, beyond where you see it. So yeah, you're never going to know what you get until you take all the paint off. Okay, let's do an experiment. This looks just like a tiny bit of, of rust right there. Now I shall remove that rust. Also, ear protection. This, this junk is loud. Okay, so maybe that was just a little bit. Bad example. Okay, here I'm starting to dig into like the rusty, rusty part, and it's blowing rusty, dusty stuff up into my face. I gotta say, it wasn't very fun. I got this tool, this is like one of them, they, they look like plastic bristles, but they're kind of abrasive. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not sold on them. I'm not sold. Now the traditional wire wheel. The wire wheel blasted just as much crap up into my face. This was before I got a face shield. But it does work, it removes rust pretty good and it gets down into the pits. Now obviously this is so pitted I'm just going to be probably welding in new metal, but I, I kind of wanted to test how these different things work. This scotch bright thing sure looked cool, it wasn't cheap though. Uh, it, it, it made a lot more noise, it seemed to be a lot more aggressive, but it really wouldn't get down into the pits, like the, the pits, the pits, you know what I'm talking about, the pits, the rust, it's, it, it's causing pits in the metal. It's also making it black. I think that's because there's a little bit of carbon in mild steel. Not as much as like hardened steel or, or cast iron or something, but there's enough that it uh, leaves behind a black carbony coating. At least that's what I was told. This is a cool texture it left. Cool as in looks neat, not cool as in I like it. I want it to be gone, but at least there's no holes through it. It's just pitted, except for right there. There are two holes in that. And I don't know how well it shows up, but the inside surface looks pretty good. Probably because I wasn't getting wet, but some of these fringe areas are definitely rusting. So I don't know how thick this metal is here, but I got this nifty thing. It's a thickness gauge. The rust did not continue past about there, but I ground the edge past a little bit. I'm going to take my thickness gauge. Do, 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 let's see. 19. Nope, oh, pretty loose. 20. Loose. 22. 22 slots in. Not tight, but it is not sloppy. So, 22 gauge. That's, that's the thickness of this steel. I think I have some 22 gauge. That's handy. Conclusion is, that kind of sucked. Wire wheel worked like a wire wheel. This thing, kind of neat, but doesn't conform as much as a wire wheel. And finally, starting to grind away rust on the van itself. Obviously I went straight for the wire wheel. I mean, who wouldn't? This thing has a, a weird mix of surfaces. There's some pitted steel, there's some surface rust, there's paint, there's primer, there's this black tar crap that was an undercoating. It's, it's, it's really nasty. There's also so seam sealer and just a whole bunch of different surfaces that I'm going to have to grind away. So it's, so it's probably likely that kind of a multiple tool approach is going to work best. But right now, I'm just, I'm just playing around, basically. Anywhere, especially along that fender, anywhere that it's so horribly pitted, I'm not even going to bother saving. I'm just going to weld new steel in. But these parts here in the front, they're, they're not going to be visible. So I might just get all the rust off and then, you know, paint over it. And it's really important to get all the rust off. If you don't, like, I, I've tried those, those rust encapsulator things. I, I'm not impressed. Of course, I drove them in salty, salty winters afterwards. So that's probably the worst case scenario. But it really is like cancer. Heard it, heard it compared to cancer. You get it all or it comes back again. You know what I've noticed with this? 
it goes through the rust pretty good and I can get down to kind of just pitted metal and it goes through this paint pretty good but this primer if the primer isn't compromised by rust underneath it it will not go through the primer because I was just wailing on it right here if I rub it with my finger you can't even see the scratches in there hardly tough primer there now the side with much more rust we're gonna try this yeah from Menards so you know it's good Oh man, the rust spray. The rust spray is terrible. Also, this tool really hates rust holes. It just shreds it up like, like sponge covered in sand, which I guess is exactly what it is, so that makes sense. Definitely more aggressive. It actually goes through the primer. Sure doesn't like dealing with the holes, though. That's what I just said. Stop stealing my lines. Also doesn't get as far down into the pits as the wire thing. Probably doesn't matter, because this is all going to be cut out and put back in anyway. Perhaps this thing. I will say this much for this thing. It, it goes down into the pits and it takes the primer off. That's good. It also dies very, very quickly. It did not last to the end of recording this. Yeah, it's a little better. Already looks pretty toast, though. Literally just said that again. Also, this thing's really expensive. Much more expensive than a wire wheel. The narrow nature does get it into tight spots like this kind of crevice area. Much better than the, the scotch Bright thing. And even a little better than the wire wheel. Although there are, are different shaped wire wheels. I don't know about this one either, but what I do know is this is going to have to be cut out because this is bad. You know, big holes and like there's junk behind there too. And I don't want to not get the stuff behind. Like I can just pull out chunks of rust. It's just flaking off and sitting back here. That's that's not good. I mean, it's like, a, it's like I'm farming rust. And what is that? Oh, electrical tape. Whatever. So much more. Does anyone want some rust? Sell it to you cheap, organic, locally sourced by me. Made in America from American cars and American road salt. Okay, those were all places that I knew I was going to be cutting open. This place, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it's on the driver's side. That's the brake master cylinder. This is where the, the wiper fluid tank was. Driver's in there. Uh, and this is kind of the top of a fender well, so we're going to hit this, the top and bottom, and see what happens. Of course, there's all these wires that are getting in my way. Maybe I can zip tie them up out of the way. Nasty looking wire wheel thing, and Darth Vader voice. Remember, use your respirator. Your respirator is your friend. This thingy really does not like the undercoating. It just gums it right up. Nothing gums up a hammer or is stabbing with a screwdriver, however. That's flawless. Perhaps underneath, and with a different tool. See, I told you there are different arrangements of wire brush. This seemed to work pretty good. This seemed to work halfway decent for getting the seam sealer off. And it goes through the tar stuff pretty well. But the, the shape is kind of awkward. It works probably for this a little better than that other one, but eh. Nope, don't like that one. Not for this application. Need something else. Perhaps this thing. The knotted up wire on the grinder worked really well, but it was a little too aggressive and I felt like it wanted to murder me at all times. This is the one thing I don't really feel safe about using a grinder. Like using the drill, I can modulate the power, but grinder is murder mode 100% of the time. Unless it's off. Off or murder. That works much better, but uh, I, really, I really do need to get my face shield out of the box because all this is getting hit. Glasses though. Safety goggles. Looks like I have a similar story kind of along this seam. That's on a seam. I think that's that's what's causing some of the issues. It's, it's on a, like a lap joint. Although it does kind of look like just holes that I'm going to need to patch. And for those of you wondering about the frame, you know, you see the rust there? That's just surface rust. I'll show you. Here's where I realized the scotch Bright thingy also sucks at dealing with that tar undercoating. It just smears it and gums it up. The wire wheel, however, the wire works pretty good. It goes it goes right through it. However, it does fling it all over the place. Like, it, it removes it from the vehicle and deposits it all over my face and garage. See, there's some pitting there for sure, but it's really just surfacey. It's even less pitting than the sheet metal, and the 22-gauge sheet metal isn't rusted through. So this is barely on the surface. This just wire wheel did that, and most of it's smooth and shiny. This is like, it's not quite quarter inch thick, but it's pretty thick. So, conclusions, I think wire wheel. Wire wheel is the good stuff for getting this tar crap off everything. This whole thing is just coated in tar. It's, I don't think it's all factory either. My dad paid some place to do something to it, to undercoat it. 
And boy, oh boy, did he get his dollar per pound of tar ratio perfect. Here's basically where I just started going all over the underside of this fender, hitting everything that looked like rust or like excessive seam sealer or tar, just kind of digging in and testing to see what I'm going to find. A lot of rust there, you can see, because it's creating the nice cloud of brown. That might be a good name for this project, Cloud of Brown. Except the clouds it makes are usually blue because of the, the massive amounts of burning oil. Anyway, tangent, uh, this, this, this was not fun, I gotta say. Not, not fun. Cathartic to see it cleaned afterwards, but doing this part here, I stopped when I started seeing wiring. Yeah, wiring. Turns out it was a hole. I was, I was starting to see the wiring inside the van. You can also see it's starting to snow seam sealer in here. So much seam sealer. I had to double check my respirator just to make sure I wasn't gonna die. Just for funsies, I kinda hit the, the spring too, cause it looked so gross and raunchy. And after the tons and tons of pounds of rust that I sprayed into the air, it actually looks pretty good underneath. I'm really surprised. I no longer think I'm gonna die the next time I hit a bump. And seriously, the amount of seam sealer they put on this, it's not even in the seams. Some of it's just like splooged all over in random places, not covering anything. You know, was, they were having a party or something and they were shooting each other with the seam sealer guns. I don't know how it worked in the Ford factory in the 80s, but I'm sure it was very messy. Seriously, like snow everywhere. Can you make a snowman out of this stuff? Or a, a seam sealer man? How about seam sealer angels? That sounds fun. Also, I bet it tastes terrible. I have a lot more to do. We're gonna, we're gonna cut ahead. So, spoiler alert, I stopped doing that when I stopped being able to see through the clouds of smoke and seam sealer. And I started taking off panels. Now, the way you do this, uh, they're, they're spot welded together from the factory, so I had to get a special bit. Well, I didn't originally have a special bit, but there are special bits for drilling out spot welds. Get one. That's, that's my suggestion. They work so much better. But some of it was so rusty, I couldn't find the spot weld, so I just cut it off with a giant cutting disc. First major sparks of the project right here, people. Enjoy them. They showered all over my feet. Check it out. Hidden between the paddles. I bet I know it's in here. Keys! My dad used to hide magnet boxes under these things with keys in them. These look like... Original keys! Wow, like some kind of brass or bronze I've heard keys are made from. It says Ford, family of fine cars. Like my dad forgot they were in there or something. By the way, drilling spot welds, not super fun. But oddly cathartic when you rip them apart. And here's why I did that. I could tell there was rust underneath there. So, you know, if I can see rust, I'm, I'm going to take this stuff apart and try to fix it. Uh, if, it, if it looks fine, I'll leave it, but this definitely did not look fine. This side's not even bad. On this side, I ended up just cutting it off because it had rusted away so much I, I couldn't find the spot welds. And it didn't matter because that's probably unsalvageable metal anyway. Let's see what's hiding under it on this side. Yep, more rot. Yeah, that's, that's definitely going to need to be fixed. This is just a flake of primer. Screwdriver test for funsies. Uh, uh. Ah, there we go. Over here you can see the rust that I could see bubbling up. So if I didn't fix that, that's going to turn into the this over here. And this is the part that I just cut off. I mean, this corner here didn't look too terrible, but all of this is rotten. And this is welded to something rotten, which is welded to something rotten. So I, I'm better off just removing it all. This isn't doing so hot either. If anyone has a better way to drill out spot welds, let me know. Sometimes I got lucky and, and didn't go all the way through. Other times, uh, you know, oops, went all the way through. I'd like to draw your attention to the inside there. Well, this front panel is really bad. It looks like that panel in there is okay. Though probably pretty bad along this, this joint up here. And of course up here, this is just, this is just all terrible. But I'm pretty much out of time for this weekend. I guess I'm going to continue this later. I'll probably remove just a couple more of these things so I can get to all the rust, at least in this front corner. Try to focus on just this corner, but it's kind of hard to work. It's surprisingly close to the wall. I'll probably just focus on this corner, get this corner nice, and uh, nice. Try to get some of it fixed up under there, and we'll see where it goes. Okay.